In June 1991, one of the largest eruptions of the 20th century took place when Mount Pinatubo erupted, sending over four cubic kilometers of rock, ash, and gases into the atmosphere. Today, the Pinatubo landscape is unrecognizable. Vast fields of ash over 25 feet deep cover what was once a maze of low hills, streams, and dirt roads leading to villages. Dams of ash formed lakes where streams once ran. But more significantly for this story, global warming appeared to pause for around two years. The Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991 was a very large one. And many people know about the effect that the, the dust, the aerosols that blew into the outer atmosphere cooled the planet by uh, a third of a degree. But uh, separate from the cooling, there was also the fact that ash from the volcano fell into the ocean and the CO2 level uh, stayed steady in 1992. And our industry was running at a rate that we were producing 20 billion tons of CO2 a year, 20 gigatons a year. And that much was absorbed by uh, the ocean after the volcano. So we are pretty sure that we can reproduce that by uh, using just the iron and perhaps some other micronutrients to produce the same effect. This graph shows the steady increase of CO2 levels, and there's a distinct pause after the Pinatubo eruption. When Pinatubo erupted, it was about five cubic kilometers of rock. We don't, uh, the amount that we need is an incredibly small portion of that. It's about 20,000 tons a year, or a fraction of an ocean tanker of iron each year. And that would be distributed by maybe five or 10 ships in just the right places in the right times. And that's all it would take. 